I just hit the scale over there and the scale was telling me that I'm heavy in the back. I am legal. My drives are at like 28,000 and these are at, my trailer's at like 32, almost 33. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these tandems back and move some of the weight off of the trailer and on to the uh, drives because you move these tandems to whatever is the heaviest. So if your trailer's heavy, like I am now, I'm gonna move these tandems back because that's where the weight is. Okay, we did a reway. Let's uh, go check out these tandems now. I'm actually still sitting on the scale. Let's go look at this. I'll show you the tickets here in a minute. You can see it, it's a little bit forward. But I had so much weight in the back, it's it's good enough. It's better than where it was way back here. It's better than it was way back here. Um, I'd rather see it a little bit forward than a whole lot back. So, see all them holes? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's about eight holes there now before I didn't show you that but before there was uh, only a couple here I'll put the flashlight out so you can see see the holes up under there that right there there was probably only maybe three or four but now there's there's probably eight empty holes there now that's just from moving it that far and that probably moved about uh, close to a thousand pounds from back there on the trailer tandem to up here on the tractor tandem. This is the before. As you can see, where it says drive axle right there, 28,400. Trailer axle, 23,560. See how far off that's it? That's way out of whack. It's still legal because we can go up to 34,000 on either one of those. We can go up to, uh, I believe, 18,000 on the steer. That's the one on the top. But, uh, of course, I've never had to uh, do anything about steer, actually. You, you move the uh, fifth wheel to adjust that, and my fifth wheel is locked, so I can't even move my fifth wheel. Um, anyway, like I said, this is the before. The first picture I showed you with uh, the trailer tandem slid forward too far. And you can see that the drive is really light and the trailer is heavy. And since uh, the weight was off that much and the tandems were that far forward, it was going to make my ride pretty bad. And uh, again, it was legal, but... Um, the ride wouldn't have been very good, and it's not as safe. For you know, the slippery condition—it's raining and everything right now. Um, it's safer to have them as as even as possible because in, you, your weight distribution is better. Um, uh, so, and that's what it was like when I picked up the trailer. It was like that. So, and afterwards, we'll look at the next ticket, which was a reway, what they call reway. And you see the difference? The drive axle is now at 2976, almost 30. And the trailer axle is 311. That's a lot closer. That's a whole lot closer. That's uh that's that's what? That's less than a thousand off. It's 300, three, four hundred, four, almost it's almost five hundred, four hundred and some off. But it's a lot better than this right here, which has it at uh, two, like 2,000, over 2,000 off. 2,160 to be exact. That's a little bit too far out for what I like. And like I showed you on the tandems, it's best to have that 41 foot mark, that red mark that was on my trailer 
as close to in between the two tires as possible. And uh, so like this, where it was only, you know, a little bit off, uh, like four or 500 pounds off, my, my, uh, my red mark was just a little bit forward, uh, which I'd rather have it just a little bit forward like that than as far back as it was with, with this amount. If it's that far off and uh, the tandems are slid way forward like that, it's, it's, it's kind of dangerous. All right, well that's, um, and, and this load is pretty heavy too. Um, if the load had been light, you know, less than 10,000 pounds, I probably wouldn't even have worried about it because it wouldn't have been worth moving it because I'm going to be legal no matter where they're at and it's it's so such a light load it's not going to bounce around a lot and it's not going to be as dangerous but um, if your load is over uh, say 35,000 pounds just your load your cargo if it's over 35,000 pounds and it'll be on your bills how much it is if it says on the bills more than 35,000 pounds, you want to go to a scale. Well, you can't see it now if there's a truck in the way, but there's a cat scale over there. You want to go to a scale. I, I, most people like the cat scales because they, they guarantee them. And, and you want to weigh it and you want to look. And make sure and get your tickets too. Make sure and get your tickets. And keep them with your bills because that uh, if you get uh, pulled over for an inspection, you can and they try and tell you that you're out of weight. You say, "Hey, look, no, here, look. This is what it says. I just weighed this." When I showed you the holes up underneath, I've shined the flashlight down and showed you the holes. Each one of those holes that you move, like if you take away a hole, you move the tandems forward. You're going to be moving about two, 250 pounds from the trailer tandems. I look at this other truck, from the trailer tandems to the, I'm sorry, to the, from the tractor tandems to the trailer tandems if you move them forward, okay? If you move it back, you're moving 250, 200, 250 pounds from there to there, okay? so. Each one of those holes up under there is about 250 pounds that you're gonna move. If, if you move the fifth wheel up here, that's going to move, say your steer axle up here in the front was heavy. Uh, you wanna move your, uh, your, your saddle or your fifth wheel forward because that's where the trouble is. You always move towards the trouble towards the weight uh, but like I said most of the time you're not gonna have to even touch that fifth wheel I've never moved the fifth wheel in the five years I've been doing this and I think the weight on a fifth wheel is it's got like uh, notches instead of holes it's got like notches on I think each notch is 400 pounds I think I'm not exactly sure like I said I haven't never had to move one I probably never will but just remember, 200 pounds per hole up underneath there is what you're going to be moving. And just do a little bit of simple arithmetic, and uh, you should be good to go. Oh, uh, one other last thing. Um, since uh, this trailer that I'm in, if it was, I'm still going to use this trailer for reference. Since I had, you know, uh, almost 40,000 pounds. And when I picked the trailer up, the tandems, see how these tandems are, are kind of far forward on this trailer too. Um, that means that there's a lot of weight up in the front. And if the trailer is loaded all the way front to back and you have to slide your tandems way forward to get it to be legal, uh, I didn't have to do that with this trailer because um, it was actually illegal where it was at, but I just did it to be safe, uh, to, to get the tandems a little bit more in an optimal position so it would be a better ride. It wouldn't be bouncing around as much. But if you have to slide your tandems way far forward 
to get yourself legal than this front portion of the trailer to the front 15, 20 feet or so. It's probably got uh, most of your weight in it. And if it's loaded from front to back, then you should probably, as, if you got it legal, just by moving the tandems, you don't need to do anything, but I, I would send a comm message. I've had to do this before. Send a comm message in, a free form message. Type in saying, uh, uh, please advise uh, shipper uh, that weight was too much in the front and uh, can they please, you know, be nice about it. Don't, don't be a, you know, don't be a butthole about it. Be nice about it. Um, but if you can't get it legal, if it's loaded so lopsided that you've got your tenants all the way forward and you're still more than 34,000 pounds up here, or if you've got your tandems all the way back past that, all the way back to that 40, uh, uh, one foot mark, because in most states there's bridge laws that say you can't have this back, this front axle here, I'm pointing at it right now, you can't have it no more than 41 feet back. Uh, in other words, you can't have your tandem slid but f so far back. Um, and, it, and not all trailers will have uh, a mark on it. If your trailer doesn't have a mark on it, just go up here to where your kingpin is, look up under there and see where it's at, and just walk forward, step it off, you know, or you can measure it, you know, just go out and measure it and uh, put a little mark on the trailer so you know where it's at before you slide your tandems. But if you can't get your weight legal by moving your tandems, then you need to let somebody know right away, let your uh, dispatcher know, say, hey, I've got my tandems all the way forward and I still got 36,000 pounds on my drives. They're gonna have to reload this trailer. You know, don't, don't take off don't say, oh, it'll be good enough. Don't do that. You're going to get yourself in trouble because a weight ticket is really bad. It's not only bad for you, but it's bad for your company as well. It's it's points that are the worst you can get uh, besides, uh, you know, rolling over or something like that. But the, if your, your weight is out and you know only took out, you know, they're going to give you a ticket, number one, and your company might... Uh, might fine you they might fire you they could do anything and uh it's not good to get to get that kind of thing happen to you but if you if you can't get it right by moving your tandems don't move stay right there at the shipper or wherever you picked it up and, and let somebody know right away say hey I, I i can't get this right you know but my tandems are all the way as far as they can and i'm still out you know i'm still out of uh compliance we need to get this uh this trail reloaded so uh that's pretty much that's a kind of a lot of information to get for you today but uh i don't know whose truck this is <laughs> but anyway ww solo trucker out okay this is another example of weight i uh i didn't realize i was going to be getting this load so quickly but uh this is right after that first video i made so i'm probably just going to tack it on to the end I went and picked up this load, it's 43,000 pounds, and this is what it was when I picked it up. You can see it's 2,000 pounds overweight on the trailer axle, which is in the back. There's still lots of room on the drive axle, so I moved my tandems. This is the second way. I moved them as far as I could back, and I'm still almost a thousand pounds over so uh and i did find out from uh, i called somebody in my shop my company shop and i found out that the 41 foot mark is from the center of the forwardmost axle on the trailer to the kingpin so i when i moved it i knew i was gonna have to go a long ways so I just moved it as far as I could the first time, moved it all the way to the center, and that's what I ended up with. I'm still 840 pounds too heavy. There's still plenty of room in the drive, and the front of the trailer, they just put too much weight on the back. So I immediately called 
and found out all that information and uh, they told me to take it back to the shipper and I had a, and unfortunately the nearest scale was a good miles of, a good uh, a good bit away so I had to drive about an hour back to the shipper sometimes that happens and I'm still here I'm in the dock now as you can see I'm in the dock and they started working on it but they're not done yet they'll come out and tell me when they're when they're finished um, I have to get with my this is Saturday so uh, my regular fleet manager is not in I have to get back with her on uh, Monday to make sure I get some uh, some pay for this it'll probably be detention pay most likely depending on how long I'm here I don't know if I'll get the miles all the way back here because it was like it's going to be over 100 miles total getting back here and then getting back on the track again so I don't know if I'll get those but I should get some detention pay so that's an, an example of what can happen WW Seller Trucker out.